Meet Stilo, my new Iron Man. My old Iron Man was hacked, so I decided to make a new one. This is my journey towards the Golden Reaper and my dream gear. A warm welcome to Stilo's Road to Redemption. Hey guys and welcome to my new Ultimate Hardcore Iron Man update video. Hey gamers, welcome back to another episode of Steelo's Road to Redemption. In the last episode, we unlocked safe cracking and then ports. The next unlock that I will go for is going to be invention. However, I plan on using a somewhat special method to unlock it. What is my plan then, you might ask? Well, Invention of course requires level 80 in crafting, smithing and divination. For divination I will just be doing caches until I hit 80 divination, so nothing fancy here. From level 30 to level 80 I need to finish 62 caches, which will take me at least 31 days or basically a month. I will put the link to the calculator that I used to calculate this down in the description in case some of you are interested in using it yourself. For crafting, I will be mining gem rocks in Shiloh village. The reason that I decided to pick Shiloh village over Alcarid mine, which is better experience an hour, is because in Alcarid you get sapphires, rubies and emeralds, whereas in Shiloh village you don't get sapphires, instead you get diamonds. Simply put, the quality of the gems that you get in Shiloh Village are just a lot better for porters, so that is why I decided to go with Shiloh Village. I will take all the gems I get from Shiloh Village, cut them, and then turn them into necklaces with the gold that I get from Living Rock Caverns. For smithing, I want to do something very different. Since this is a new account, we don't have a lot of GP. After finishing the safe cracking grind, we are now up to about 6 million GP, but that won't last us very long. This means sustaining dailies like shop runs and traveling merchant items will be very difficult. Besides that, I also need 75 summoning to unlock thriftiness in the near future, which will also cost us a bit for the spirit shards. So how to resolve this issue? Arrows. Arrows provide us a lot of value at my current account stage. Smithing arrowheads for 80 smithing provides me with the following. First off, I will bank 92 fletching, which unlocks a lot of great scrimshaws that we have access to now since we unlocked ports in the last episode. Some of the scrimshaws unlocked are Cruelty for Ranging, Elements for Magic, Vampirism for Melee, and memory gathering for when we need to farm energies for our porters. As you can see, getting 92 fletching early on is going to be a great unlock. Secondly, this will land us with a net profit of about 60 million raw GP that we can spend on dailies and other stuff that requires gold. You can instantly sell the arrows to a general store, so fletching them is basically generating us pure GP. Every rune bar you smith generates 75 rune arrows and if you flat those arrowheads into arrows then the 75 rune arrows will sell for 11.5k GP to a general store. Thirdly, smithing rune arrowheads are extremely AFK. I did not know this at the time, but you can actually right click the anvil to start a new project if you already have a project in your inventory. That means that after you finish your project, you will automatically move on to the next unfinished project until you finish your entire inventory. At level 59 smithing, starting a rune bar project will always start at full heat. This means that you can AFK an entire inventory without needing to reheat the projects, which is super good. So, is the strategy worth it then? To find out, you need to look at the time it would take you to get to 80 smithing the conventional way versus the time it would take you to get 80 smithing during rune arrow hits. As an example, we could say that getting 80 smithing doing the conventional route could take us around 100 hours to do. Let's say that doing rune arrow hits would take us 200 hours instead. This means that we would save 100 hours doing the conventional route. I don't think that I can get things done that makes up for all the benefits that we get by doing rune arrow hits for an extra 100 hours, at least not at my current account stage. 
if I don't bank 92 fletching, and I will need to get Vasum all the way eventually. What most Iron men end up doing here are broad arrows. If you go by this logic, then 92 fletching is 6,517,253 experience. Making one broad arrow is worth 15 experience or 16.25 experience if you factor in the experience that you get for making the headless arrows. If you divide those two numbers, you will find out that we need to make about 400,000 broad arrows to get up to 92 fletching. Buying broad arrows costs us 50 GP each, and if you times that by 400,000, then the cost will be about 20 million GP doing broad arrows to 92 fletching. If you add the 20 million GP saved to the 64 million raw GP that we will make, we essentially generate 84 million worth of value making rune arrow hits. If we divide the 84 million worth of value by the extra 100 hours, then we generate 840,000 GP worth of value every hour we do rune arrow hits. Now you guys should be mostly up to speed as to why I decided to pick this route. So let's get back into the video. Okay, so to kick off our smithing grind, I'm going to start out by making a mythal ore box, a mythal pickaxe, so we can mine ores and a mythal hatchet so we can begin chopping locks for our arrow shafts. There we go, that will be 15 fletching. We can now start doing iron arrows. So let's head over to the Lombridge Swamp Mine where we can mine a few iron ores. I made my way over to Lombridge West Mine. Here we can mine iron ore. And I chose this spot as it is located really closely to the Shattered World's Bank. So we can bank the ores really easily. We finished a few inventories of iron, so let's turn these into iron arrows now. We ran out of hills, so we made our way over to Pot's Rim to restock a few. We ran out of fillers again, so I needed to restock some more. Another nice addition that they added, that I didn't have the last time that I played my Iron Man, is that they added these filler packs, where I get a lot of fillers, so we don't have to do so many filler runs, which will be a great addition as we need to make a lot of headless arrows for our grind. Okay, that will be 45 fletching. We now have the level that we need to do mithril arrows, which will be a huge upgrade to our experience. Okay, so I lost the footage of me getting 60 fletching, which means that we can now do adamant arrows, our last stop before we get up to rune arrows. So this will be a huge boost. I think I will boost from level 70 fletching up to 75 fletching so that I can do rune arrows pretty early on. Okay, so as you guys can see here, we hit 70 fletching, but I lost the footage of me hitting it actually. But like I mentioned earlier, I am going to boost from 70 up to 75 using spicy stews, so that way we can get a kickstart on our rune arrow grind. And I probably should have done this on day one, but it was around this point that I went over to Anacronia and begun our base camp. I decided to work on a few keepsake keys, and I sort of want to work towards the old outfit that my old Iron Man had. Starting off, I'm going to get the Gnome Ball shorts and the light blue hat from Trinome Stronghold. And finally for now, the Doctor's Gown. 
Okay, so I just got the three pieces of keepsakes that I wanted for now. So I'm going to throw these into the keepsakes. Okay, and this is the final result for now. And uh, slowly as we progress, I will add more pieces to my outfit. And we are of course still doing our caches and this will take us up to 38 divination. Okay, that should be the last Roomba that I need to smith. We are now up to 418,000 rune arrowheads, which means we have banked 92 fletching. And we are like 50k smithing experience away from level 80 smithing, which we will get when we start mining the gold from the living rock caverns and smell those into gold bars for the necklaces for our crafting grind. So for now, that means that I will begin mining gems in Shell Village, so we can finish the crafting. Okay, that will be the Lost City. And the Restless Ghost. So in the background you just see me burn a few oak logs so that I can get up towards 30 fire making. After I get 30 fire making I'm going to do the waterfall quest since uh, since you need 30 fire making, 30 taking strength to do the quest beneath Kurt's to, to do the quest beneath Kurt's to do the quest beneath cursed tides, which is a requirement for a monthly event. The oyster. Okay, that will be the waterfall quest done. We now have all the requirements to do beneath cursed tides, so let's go ahead and knock that out. There we go, that will be beneath cursed tides, and now let's do the oyster event, since this is pretty close to the end of the month. Okay guys, so this is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment, like and subscribe and ring the notification bell. Currently, as of uploading this video, I am working towards getting the Inquisitor staff and the Spear Tip from Archaeology. When I get those two, I will start PVMing and after that I will probably start streaming a bit on Twitch as well. So, if you guys are interested, feel free to check me out over on twitch.tv slash watchstilo. Other than that guys, have a nice day and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye guys.